Demora Smith. He is the executive director of the NFL Players Association. And, D, I know how busy you are. I thank you for doing this. My, my first question is, what are you hearing right now from your players across the league? Well, we're, we're hearing um, and seeing that there are people who believe um, in their community. We're hearing and seeing that there is hurt um, and is frustrated and is angry, um, disappointed, um, as, as I am about this. You know, you, you've seen players on every part of the spectrum, from, from people who are protesting to, to people who are cleaning up uh, after looting. Um, anytime that we hear that our players are concerned about the community that they live in, um, and that they're angry about what they see, um, I, I think is good. Um, I think it's great because um, sometimes people think that our men somehow live in a bubble, um, not affected by the things around them, um, the color of all of our skins, the fact that many of us are, are fathers and, and we've all had to have tough conversations with our kids um, I think anything that reminds people that we live and work um, in the community that we love and we want to see get better, I, I, think that's a, I think that's a great demonstration of empathy. Indeed, there's a long and proud history of social activism from within the sports world. What, what role specifically do you hope your players can play in all of this today? Um, easy. Um, be relevant. Be involved. Um, and make sure that you are an agent of positive change. Um, you know, whether it was, um, you know, the, the, the athletes who stood around Muhammad Ali um, at a time when he stood up and paid a very large price for his voice, um, whether it was Olympic athletes who put their hands up uh, to show their voice, um, when it was Colin and the people um, in our league who supported him. Um, that's the role of athletes who believe that they not only are sports figures in their community, but that they are actually living actors in their community for change. D, I, I just read a moment ago a statement from Roger Goodell over the weekend. In one sentence, he says, there remains, uh, there remains excuse me, an urgent need for action. So how about from the owners and from the league? What, what role can they play? What should that action look like? Well, I think their action has to match their words. Um, we have not always seen eye to eye, certainly, um, in the National Football League in the, in the you know, nearly 60 years, 70 years of, of our union. Um, I, I think that there is an ongoing debate about whether um, and how we live in America has to come at the expense of someone else. Um, that's a conversation that you're seeing playing out right now. And there are people in this country who bear the expense or bear more of the cost or the brutal reality of the life um, that, that many of us have. So. Um, sports is, is simply a reflection at times of what we are going through. I don't believe that our role is simply to provide entertainment and an escape for people. Um, I know that people love their football, and I do too. Um, but our job, um, our core mission, isn't to just provide an escape for people. Um, we work, um, our players work just like other workers um, they're exposed just like other workers, um, and we stand shoulder to shoulder with every man and woman who's a part of organized labor because we understand that these are all people who work for a living. Um, but I don't think our job should just be to provide an escape. And, and when I see um, our players um, actively involved in expressing their anger and their frustration and their outrage, I, I think I'm proud of them because there are certainly days where I want to flip over a table. Um, I don't have one of those jobs where you, you get to throw things up against the wall. But are there days where you are simply frustrated with status quo? Absolutely. Um, and when our men decide to, to be a part of their community and, and be agents for positive change, 
Um, this is a union that is always going to support them um, and stand shoulder to shoulder with them. D, a final thought, if I may. You and I have known each other a very long time, and if it isn't too personal, yep. I wonder if I could just ask you to take a moment to speak from the heart about what we're seeing in our country right now and, and what it makes you feel. You, when, you know, when you're a dad, you, you always want to be able to say that things are getting better. Um, that's what my dad wanted for me. He didn't want me and my family to endure the racism that they felt as a father who's been pushed up a, against a police car before, been handcuffed before. You don't want those things to happen to your children. And when you reach, you know, I'm nearing my 60th year, when we watch episode after episode of something horrible happening to people of color in this community, you don't want to be in a world where you have to tell your kids that you don't think it's getting better. So I always try to find hope um, here. And, and my hope is that protest and, and rightful protest turns into action. My hope is that everybody um, registers to vote and vote um, that you don't match hate with hate. Um, we are in a world now where people um, feel really comfortable. I'm just trying to stay a little bit there. People are feeling really comfortable saying and expressing the hate um, that's been in their heart for a long time. Um, the good side of that is now we know who you are. Um, but it's, all, it's incumbent upon all of us to try to make our community better.